So as mentioned earlier, traditional costing systems are volume driven, driven by the unit based cost drivers such as direct labor or machine hours. Now some activity costs are strictly variable and are caused by the production or the acquisition of a single unit or product or the performance of a single unit of service. However, um, there are other activity costs that are not driven by unit based cost drivers which has led to the development of a classification of ABC activities consisting of the four levels which you see here, unit, batch, product, and facility. So unit level activities are performed for each unit of production. For example, the assembly of cell phones is a unit level activity because the amount of assembly of the company performs increases with each additional cell phone assembled. Then we have batch level activities. These are performed every time a company produces another batch of a product. For example, suppose that to start processing a new batch of ice cream, an ice cream producer needs to set up its machines. So the amount of time spent setting up machines increases with the number of batches produced, not necessarily with the number of units produced. Then we have something called product level activities. These are performed every time a company produces a new type of product, for example, before a pharmaceutical company can produce and sell a new type of medicine, it must undergo very substantial product tests to ensure that the product is safe and effective. The amount of time spent on testing activities increases with the number of products the company produces. And then finally, we have batch level activities, which are required to support or sustain an entire production process. Let's consider, for example, a hospital. The hospital building must be insured and heated and property taxes must be paid, no matter how many patients the hospital treats. These costs do not vary as a function of the number of units, batches, or products. So companies may achieve greater accuracy in overhead cost allocation by recognizing these four different levels of activity and from them developing specific activity cost pools and their related associated cost drivers. So here's uh, an example of the typical types of activities that might be associated with each of the four uh, levels of activities. And then you can see the appropriate cost drivers for those. Now the classification here provides managers with a structured way of thinking about the relationships between activities and the resources they consume. In contrast, traditional volume-based costing recognizes only unit level costs, which is a failure to recognize this classification of activities is one of the reasons why volume-based cost allocation distorts product cost. As we mentioned earlier, allocating all overhead costs by unit cost drivers can send false signals to managers. Dividing batch, product, and facility level costs by the number of units produced gives mistaken impression that those costs vary with the number of units. Now the resources consumed by batch, product, and facility level supporting activities do not vary at the unit level, nor can managers control them at the unit level. The number of activities performed at the batch level goes up as the number of batches rises, not as the number of units within each batch changes. Similarly, the number of product level activities performed depends on the number of different products, not on how many units or batches are produced. And furthermore, facility sustaining activity costs are not dependent on the number of products, batches, or units produced. Companies can control batch, product, and facility level costs only by modifying batch, product, and facility level activities. Now we also have something called activity-based management, which refers to using activity-based costing information to make decisions that increase profits while satisfying customers' needs. So activity-based management means to use ABC information for pricing and product decisions, for helping to identify ways of cutting costs, and for routine planning and control decisions. Now ABC can be used to make better decisions including pricing of product and product mix, meaning how much of each product we should produce. Now ABC recognizes that not all indirect costs are driven by the number of units produced. That is to say not all costs are unit level costs. Rather many costs are incurred at the batch level or product level where they can be spread over the number of units in the batch or in the product line. 
ABC tends to increase the unit cost of low volume products and decrease the unit cost of high volume products. As a result of using ABC, many companies have found that they were actually losing money on some of their products while earning much more profit than they realized on others. By shifting the mix of products offered away from the less profitable towards the more profitable, companies are able to generate higher operating income. Now companies adopt ABC to get more accurate product costs for pricing and product mix decisions, but they often reap even greater benefits by using activity-based management to pinpoint opportunities and to cut costs. So as the term suggests, value-added activities are activities for which the customer is willing to pay because these activities add value to the final product or service. So in other words, these activities have help satisfy the customer's expectations of the product or service. By identifying the company's activities and their related costs, managers can analyze whether all of the activities are really necessary. On the other hand, we have something called non-value-added activities. These are also referred to as waste activities. So these are activities that neither enhance the customer's image of the product or service, nor provide a competitive advantage. The types of activities such as storage of inventory, movement of parts from one area um, to another, could could be reduced or removed from the process with no ill effect on the end product or service. In addition to pricing, product mix, and cost cutting decisions, a company can use ABC in planning, routine planning and control. So activity-based budgeting can also use the costs of activities to cre help create budgets. Managers can compare actual activity costs to budgeted activities to determine how well they are achieving their goals. Now using ABC outside of manufacturing, manufacturing and service companies also find ABC techniques useful. These firms use ABC to allocate the cost of operating activities rather than production activities among product lines or services to figure out which are most profitable. So ABC can be used to allocate the cost of store operating activities such as ordering, stocking, customer service among various departments. An accounting firm may use ABC to allocate secretarial support, software costs, and travel costs between its tax audit and client services. Manufacturers may use ABC to allocate operating activities such as research and development, marketing and distribution costs to different product lines. And managers can use the data generated by ABC to determine which products or services to emphasize to set prices to cut costs and make other routine planning and control decisions. One of the big benefits of using ABC versus a traditional costing system is that under ABC, overhead costs are often shifted from the high volume products to the low volume products. And the reason is because low volume products often require much more specialized handling. So um, they often require more time, more setups, things like that. So by assigning overhead using ABC, that will usually increase the cost per unit of a low volume product as opposed to the high volume products. So we take a little bit closer look at ABC costing. We are going to get more accurate product costing through the use of more cost pools to assign overhead costs. We're going to get enhanced control over overhead costs and hopefully better management decisions along the way. So the benefits of adopting activity-based costing or activity-based management, do they actually exceed the cost? Well, the benefits of adopting ABC and ABCM are higher for companies in competitive markets. Now, this is because we get accurate product costing information, which is essential for setting competitive sales prices and yet still allow the company to earn a profit. Now, ABCM can pinpoint opportunities for cost savings, which increase the company's profit or are passed on to customers in lower prices. Now, the benefits of adopting ABC and ABCM are higher when the risk of cost distortion is high. For example, if the company produces many different products that use different types and amounts of resources, if all the products use similar types and amounts of resources, a simple plant-wide allocation system works fine. So if the company has a high indirect costs, that's also a good time to use ABC. If the company has relatively few indirect costs, it matters less how they're going to be allocated. And then again, if the company produces high volumes of some products and low volumes of others, activity-based costing works well. 
Now the costs associated with activity-based costing is um, generally that the accounting and information system expertise is more that you're going to require that in order to develop the system. So it's a fair bit more expensive. And then um, information technology though, such as barcoding, optical scanning, things like that, um, can be used to help compile cross driver data. Now a survey shows that the majority of companies surveyed that the value of ABC exceeds the cost of implementing it. And in other words, then it would be worth it. ABC is not, however, a cure-all. As the controller for one Midwest manufacturer said, ABC will not reduce cost. It only helps you better understand your cost so you know where you can correct things. So when do you really want to use ABC costing? If you have products that differ greatly in volume or manufacturing complexity, complexity. The product lines you have are numerous, they're very diverse, they require different degrees of support, your overhead costs are a significant portion of total costs. Um, you have significant change in manufacturing process or the number of products and then um, managers ignore data from one existing system and instead use bootleg costing data so they're not necessarily using the information that they should be. Now, here's some signs that the old systems may be distorting costs. So, um, how do you know whether your system is broken and needs repair? So, the cost system may need repair when managers don't understand costs and profits, uh, when you lose a bid, when you expect it to win, uh, when you win bids, you expect it to lose. This is, those are both indicators that perhaps your pricing is wrong, meaning your cost of your products that you're using to set your prices is off. And then competitors price similar products much higher or much lower. Again, an indicator that your cost is out of date. So if your costing system is out of date, um, it may be out of date if you have a more diversified product line than you once did, or you've re-engineered your process, but not the accounting system. And lastly, traditional systems often keep large inventories of raw materials, work in process, and finished goods on hand. And then ABC and AB often reveal the high cost of the activities such as buying, storing, moving inventory, producing poor quality products and services. So why are inventory such a, a large problem for companies? Well, they use a lot of cash and then companies incur uh, interest expense uh, for storing that in product or they forego the interest revenue on that cash. So if a company has to borrow money to pay for inventory, it's incurring interest expense on the loan. Even if they use their own cash, it misses the opportunity to earn interest on that cash. So large inventories often hide quality problems, production bottlenecks, and obsolescence. Inventory may spoil, uh, be broken, or become obsolete. So activities for storing and taking care of items out of storage are expensive, and ABC and ABCM have helped uncover the cost of these non-value-added activities.